Hey, welcome back. We're here with Keith Taylor. We've been telling you a little bit about his new restaurant, The Old Mill, Taylor's Old Mill. That's correct. Um, so we're going to start here. We're warming our pan up, but we were just talking off camera while we were waiting to come back, and uh, what a great thing. Now, you're only open, you're open f from Wednesday on. Right. What we do is the restaurant is open Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. On Wednesdays, we do something that's called uh, Blues, Brews, and Barbecue, and it's an open mic jam. Blues artists come from all over, from as far away as Atlantic City, New York, whatever, and a lot of guys, local guys, a lot of guys from the Philly area come in, they jam, it's run by a guy named Brian McLean, and they call themselves the Band of Crazies. Yeah. And they're kind of like the house band, and everyone else just comes in, and sometimes we've got 10 and 12 guys on stage. Yeah, man, what you're saying, though, what I think is neat, what you've done for them, because like, yeah. you're into the music, is the sound system's there, right. the drum kit's there, right. they just got to come plug in and go. Plug and play. Yeah. That's it. That's very, awesome. Very simple. Now, tell me what else, because... Right. On the website, you can check this out. But every night that he's open, he opens on Wednesday, right. and then it's just it's just a fest all the way through. That's right. The beauty of Taylor's is I always I always say, uh, you know, my partners and I decided what do we want to be, all right? And we're a restaurant first. So you come in, you get good food. The bonus is that every night there's something going on at night. So on Thursday nights we have something that's called uh, that's called old school Thursdays, and basically we play old school R and B. Uh, Rhythm and blues, old soul music. Like a little that dance runs party. all night. It's kind of like an old school dance party. On Friday and Saturday is something that we do live at Taylor's. On Fridays and Saturdays, we bring in the best of the jazz and R&B artists in the area and some that travel travel regionally or nationally that come through. We've had Georgie Bonds. Uh, we've had, a, a, a oh, God, the Arpeggio Band. We have a Soul Patrol. All kinds of great bands and artists that come through the play in all the many venues in the Philly area. On Sunday, on Sunday night, we do something called called Taylor's Idol, <laughs> and it's karaoke, <laughs> and it ends every couple months with a $1,000 cash prize, and the talent comes out of the woodworks. I guess, for a grand. Place. Oh, yeah, it's not bad, it's not bad. <laughs> no doubt. You know, we have fun with it. We bring in, we bring in some celebrity judges. We have Miss Barbara Walker come in, a couple Grammy Award-winning artists who came through and been the judge, and we do that every Sunday. We have a lot of fun with it. That should be nice. All right, so how are we going to start this off? we got a nice, yeah, warm pan we're going. we're looking good. All right. To make jambalaya, there's a couple of important pieces, and for me, it's always let it's always make sure that you bring out the flavors. So you can look. I've really got I've got a flame on that's pretty high. If you can catch that with the camera, I like working with a high flame because that high heat caramelizes foods and really snaps out flavor. First thing I'm working with is a combination of of a vegetable oil and olive oil. The reason why I use the combination thereof is because olive oil will burn too easily. It has a very low smoke point, so the vegetable oil has a higher smoke point, and it keeps things from burning. My first ingredient that goes in is garlic. Now I have sliced garlic for one reason. I think sliced garlic actually releases flavor a little better than if it were to be chopped or minced or... Now would other. this stop this from burning as fast if, if, if it was smaller pieces too? Because garlic can burn fast and then you don't like the flavor. It can, but believe it or not, garlic is actually part of the edible part of the dish. So one of the reasons why I slice it, because once it caramelizes, it takes on a nuttier, sweeter flavor. It doesn't have that pungent, strong flavor. Okay. So it's actually just like biting into a morsel of onion or anything else that's part of the dish. All right, good. So what's important to me, again, garlic in its original state, very strong. When it browns and, take, and takes on the colors that you see here, that's when it's really lending something to the dish, and I think that's very, very important. Once it gets to that point, the next thing that I'll do is I'm going to add andouille sausage. This is andouille sausage that we bring in from Louisiana. And part of the reason why I add that first is because I want that andouille sausage to get a little bit of color. It's very important that I get a little bit of color on the andouille. And a lot of the smoky flavor that's in the andouille comes out into the oil. And what's andouille made out of? I know it's just spicy, and right. I know I like it, but I don't know what's in it. It's a pork sausage, and one of the differences between andouille and maybe an Italian sausage, something that you're familiar with, is that that Italian sausage is not smoked. This is cured and smoked almost in the same fashion as a ham. Okay. Next, I know I like it. Next I'm adding in a small amount of chicken breast. And what I'm adding next is something that we call the Holy Trinity. And it's a combination of celery, onions, and pepper, and bell peppers. Those celery, onions, and bell peppers is some of the flavoring for this particular dish that really brings out some of the things that if you were to use a standard meal file like carrot, celery, and onions, right. which is which is indigenous to French cooking or traditional cooking, this is really indigenous of coming from the French Quarter, Louisiana, right. any of those areas where the Holy Trinity is the beginning of several dishes that come from those areas. Yeah, exactly. I just love the way that you call it the Holy Trinity. It sounds a lot more, you know, a lot more punch to it than mirepoix. Well, that's because, believe it or not, cooking is a religion in Louisiana. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 
these items that you can see them kind of just getting all together in here and I'm not looking to, to, to make a mush I really want to just cook these vegetables just enough so that, so that once they're sweated they're going to release a lot of their natural juices and go into the dish itself one of the other keys to good jambalaya I think is making sure that you have good stock which is the next item that we're going to be adding right after we do one thing there's some seasonings that belong in jambalaya and I think they're very very important here I have a little bit of oregano and we're just going to put like a nice pinch of oregano right in it I have some thyme we're going to do the same thing with basil now you see here I'm working with dry ingredients there's a reason for that because I'm trying to make it so that at home you can do it as simple as I'm doing it here <laughs> alright keep it simple that's keep the it whole simple. idea that's All the right? theme the next thing that I'm going to go into the dish with this is a clam stock if you were at home you could probably you could probably do something as simple as get something like a canned clam juice but this stock is going to carry through the theme of one other piece that I'm adding to the dish shrimp is a very big part of this but the reason why I'm going with shrimp less because they don't take very long to cook and these other items are almost fully cooked so it's one of the last proteins that go into the finished pro into the finished dish. And I'll steep this whole mixture together in this broth. I saw you smelling awesome too. Now there's a few there's a few methods that will come next. While this is cooking, while this is cooking, my grandmother would do something different than I'm doing here. My grandmother would take tomato paste and she would do something called pince meaning she would put it in before you add the liquid and let that tomato paste get brown and all kinds of brown bits and really get browned up in there and a lot of that browning would go into the dish all right but because we have to make it all minute one at a time for customers at the restaurant I make a sauce that's kind of a kind of a, a take on an Italian tomato sauce called filetto di pomodoro all right which literally means sliced tomatoes in Italian and then we cook it down so it's heavier almost like a paste and that also goes into this dish okay well let's well, can we take a break now yes, without we can. missing anything? Oh, no. We can take a break right now because we're going to let this cook down a little bit. Okay, cool. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back and uh, finish this up.